Arcade Heroes. Greetings, it's Adam with ArcadeHeroes.com and at Amusement Expo 2023 in Las Vegas, Nevada on March 29th and 30th, we were able to see something at the show that we hadn't seen in a little while, and that was an indie arcade game. And this company, which was, this was the first time they'd come to an expo, is called Allen One. And if you don't know what that is referring to, well, I'll send you to Tron, Disney's Tron movie. And <laughs> I won't explain it from there. But the founder of the company is actually an arcade operator in Utah. And so a fellow Utah arcade operator, I could say, uh, to myself, his arcade is called Flynn's Retrocade, and it's located in a small city called Roy, Utah, which wasn't too far from where I had my second location in, back in 2022. But uh, he's designed this new game, which, as you probably could tell, is a bit like Joust. But after playing it, I would say it's Joust meets some Killer Queen. Now, one little Easter egg there is that in the ba all the backgrounds are based off of scenes from Utah itself. And in fact, you probably saw the uh, little pillar the, the, that made the news, kind of the meme news back in southern Utah a little while back, where there was this, this, this metal-looking... Uh, rectangle that appeared in the Utah desert. It was just kind of a prank. Uh, but uh, all the backgrounds are from scenes within Utah's outdoors of one kind or another. Not all of them are southern Utah, although that obviously gets a lot of attention. But uh, this game called Avian Nights, prior to the show it was called Jousting Heroes, but they changed that so it, they could avoid any sort of legal headaches with Warner Brothers, who owns the Joust name as well as uh, all the other Midway and Atari games classics. Uh, Avian Knights is available or going to be available in two and four player configurations. And what is interesting about this is the, as explained to me by a guy that you probably can't hear too much over my commentary here, was the hardware, the cabinet. And so both cabinets I, I was impressed to see that they had quite a bit of thought put into them and features. I've seen a lot of arcade cabinets designed by indies over the years and they've often been really good. Only once in a while have I come across something that was seemed just slightly better than homemade. Um, but this one, see, the cabinet itself seemed very professional and uh, like it came out of a major manufacturer. There will still be some design changes, such as the fans will not be quite open like that, uh, so that people can't like, pour a drink or <laughs> inside of them or anything along those lines. The controls are fairly simple with three buttons and the joystick, although I was surprised the joystick felt a little bit loose to me, uh, so I'm not sure if that will change for the final build or not. Also not sure if the four player cabinet might change in terms of the depth from the screen, like the screen feels a little bit large compared to how shallow the control panel is. And so uh, perhaps, again, no, nothing's final with all this, but this is close to final. The cabinet has a lot of artwork on it, it has dynamic RGB LEDs. It has a rumble feature, so it almost feels like you're playing, say, a, with a gamepad, but you're using an arcade stick there. And then it even has a pinball knocker on it. And so uh, all these little things that they, these little details that they put into it are pretty impressive. Now the game itself, it, again, it's like Joust, but now they've added these weapons, and so as you've probably been seeing the gameplay here, the weapons are, well, you'll have different icons around the play field, and when one lights up, you can fly over it to gain that weapon, and then you can upgrade the weapon three times, 
and obviously the third round is going to be the most powerful. And so there's also an app that is tied to this, so you can create a user account and log in, just scanning the QR code that's printed on the control panel, and that allows you to not only keep track of your score, but to participate in tournaments and see, follow friends and see how they're doing, see how you're doing on the main leaderboards. And so uh, James, the founder of Allen One, was kind enough to show me how all that works as, long as, as well as with the other features, or other gameplay features. And there's a lot about this that's inspired by Atari games of the past. And so the, you can probably notice the cone button, start buttons that are on there. Uh, that also just when you start a game, it has uh, different waves that you can pick from, which is what Atari did for a while, like on games like Tempest and Millipede and, uh, and several others. And so if you want to start on wave one, it's just the easiest you can, but if you're more experienced, you can already jump ahead. And so other than that, it if you are already familiar with Joust, if you're good at Joust, it'll be familiar in that regard. It's just the weapons do change things up because in Joust you're just always trying to flap your bird to be higher than the other birds. And while you can do that here, uh, it's really the more that you can use the weapons and the power-ups that are on the playfield, such as if you get a phoenix, you can burn other birds and players. Uh, you can get a poison gas cloud, which can also affect them in that regard. And so it, it's... It feels a lot, a lot like if Joust was being kept up to date by Warner Brothers in <laughs> these days, uh, what it would be like. And it, again, can handle either two players or up to four players. I, I did not play it in single player mode. I talked to somebody else at the show who it, where they were wondering if it would have legs like that. Granted, it does have scoring. It has the online features to be pushing for the score. As uh, you can get this kiosk which shows the leaderboards as well and so I think in that regard perhaps it could have some legs but I may be testing this out soon as well at my own arcade to kind of see how it does in a casual arcade environment uh, where uh, interesting thing I guess an interesting difference would be that my arcade is still the pay-to-play, pay-per-coin sort of thing, whereas James's arcade is a, the free-play model that a lot of people tell me that I should be doing, and that's, you know, you pay to get in, and then all the games are on free-play. But of course, the way that games feel when you're in a free-play arcade is different than when you're in a traditional arcade, so to speak. So it could be interesting to see how it does there. Uh, but before I forget, another difference between this and Joust is that when you are knocked off of your bird, you can lay an egg, <laughs> and that's one of the buttons there, and when the egg hatches, then that is your warrior, and then you can go and grab them, and then that puts you back into the game. Uh, but you can, other, other players can come along and steal your eggs and power themselves up, power their birds up. And so that does create an interesting little dynamic there that, again, doesn't really exist with Joust or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, this is an uh, interesting new entry into the arcade business and also is going to be available sometime this year. It sounded like they were already taking orders, uh, but production, I can't remember what James said, it sounded like it was later in the year, probably this summer, is what they are aiming for. And of course, they want to do more testing and uh, get things fine tuned and polished and all that. And he was talking about uh, doing some other games as well. They don't want to just do this as a one and done sort of thing. They want to support the arcade business and are looking at jumping in there. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments as to this game, other indie games, and so on. And what. Uh, you like about this from what you've seen and what I've told you as well as what you may not like about it is again they well, one thing that I always like about indies is they're always pretty open to 
suggestions, constructive criticism, that sort of thing, so that they can improve their game, because they obviously want to sell it. <laughs> and so the better that they can make it for the arcade business, and they, generally speaking, don't have any qualms about that. And so, yeah, let me know what you think, and we'll see you on the next video.